Hi, my name is Sam Dhanishekaran and uh, welcome to this Database Lessons video series. In this video, we will continue to talk about the System Global Area Database Buffer Cache and this would be the last video in System Global Area sub-series. However, we have a lot of videos to go to finish the database series. Okay, so here we will talk about different sections of DB buffer. I mean the database buffer cache. Okay, so in the previous videos I was showing uh, a particular area as database buffer cache and I was explaining that. Okay, so what happens in the default database buffer cache area is like I mentioned in the previous videos uh, you know data gets read to the default buffer area and uh, if uh, the blocks are frequently used uh, they stay in the database buffer because um, as I mentioned in previous videos uh, you know uh, they go to the hot end and they still stay there and whatever database blocks that are on the cold end will be aged out right so that's the normal process when data gets read into uh, the database buffer cache again um, according to the frequency of the usage those go into hot end or the cold end and uh, uh, when new data uh, needs to be read to the buffer cache then the first set of database uh, the, the blocks that would be aged out would be from the cold end so that's the default behavior so if we uh, go into the database buffer cache okay we can have this would be the default configuration just uh, up to this point you know just ignore these things like one two three four these boxes just ignore it so let's just talk about this one so on a high level data gets read into that and uh, anything that is not frequently accessed or that anything that becomes cold they get aged out okay now for certain objects I mean certain tables we may want to change that behavior for example there could be a table uh, which I want that to be present in the memory or the DB buffer cache uh, without aging out okay I may not be accessing it frequently that doesn't mean that I want that to get aged out okay so what I do is when I create those objects when I create those tables I specify an option saying that whenever this table is read right put its data into a separate section of DB buffer cache called keep okay I mean this is not a different buffer cache it's it's an again an area within the DB buffer cache but this area is called keep okay the default area is called default okay this can also be called as pools okay so this would become default pool and this would become keep pool okay so the speciality of this pool or of this area is any data that is read into here will not edge out they will just stay there so in this way we can increase the performance of uh, the database uh, if we know that some tables would be needed even though if it's not frequently accessed but we, we want the data in the table to be copied and kept here okay 
probably that table doesn't undergo many modifications or something but still you know you want to keep it there but even if it undergoes modification it would go into here and then go back come back from here to disk okay that's the key pool and uh, um, we can configure some other type of objects to age out immediately so when those objects gets red instead of going to the default pool they go into another pool called recycle pool and as soon as they are red and they are done I mean the processes are done using it they get aged out so meaning that we know that they will not be accessed frequently or even they don't have to be there occupying the memory space we could better use the memory for something else right so for that we can use this pool so when we create those objects remember when we create those objects we configure the pools also if you don't configure any pools by default it goes to the default pool right and then it uh, it follows the natural pattern of how frequently it gets accessed and depending upon that it gets aged out or kept in the memory okay and for some objects if we want any when it gets read if we want that to once it gets into the memory we, we want that to be kept there then we can configure it to go into keep pool and for other objects we you know which we need uh, to be aged out immediately as soon as the work is done we configure it to go to recycle pool okay apart from that uh, we can uh, create uh, separate sections in database buffer cache with block sizes different okay this is basically useful um, in um, oracle databases which has multiple block sized table spaces like i mentioned oracle uses table spaces right and uh, each table space uh, by default they go through the uh, they have the default block size okay but however we can create table spaces with different block size for example if the de default block size is 8k i can create a table space with 4k block size only thing is it needs to create a different section uh, a different actually um, a buffer pool where it's uh, the the size of the block is 4k and if i have a 16k table space and it's going to have a another buffer uh, for that table space any data from there will go there and come back any data from this 4k will go there and come back so these are the different sections of database buffer cache thank you for watching in fact this ends the uh, comprehensive tutorial on db buffer cache Thanks. But then we will, uh, and I will continue with the rest of the videos, uh, database videos, soon. Thanks. Bye.